thank you, Ambassador uh, Babe Sumaldis, for your kind introduction. The, please, please take a seat. <laughs> the, uh, USS, the U.S. ASEAN Business Council President, Ambassador Ted Osius, the uh, U.S. Chamber of Com Commerce Senior Vice President for Asia, Charles Freeman, uh, the Cabinet Secretaries and, the f and uh, that we have that have come uh, to join me here at this uh, trip to uh, the United States. Uh, some of the uh, stalwarts of the Philippine economy are also here uh, that have joined us today. Uh, esteemed leaders of the U.S. and Philippine uh, business with us today, uh, Madam Ambassador, um, all the distinguished guests who are here. I, uh, very pleasant uh, good afternoon to you all. As has just been mentioned, uh, though the relationship between the Philippines and the United States have front and center right now security and defense uh, issues that we have to confront uh, together as partners once again. We have always had that very strong partnership between our two countries and the as we have seen over the years, despite some bumps and uh, scrapes along the way, uh, they, we have really gone uh, from strength to strength. And, uh, but now that security and defense are top of mind, uh, we also have to see that because our economies and our societies have grown more complex, everything impinges on everything else. And there is very, it is very little for, very, uh, very hard for us to separate and say that this is a discrete sector that does not affect any other sector. Uh, I think that uh, that is the lesson that we learn now, uh, especially in the post-pandemic uh, economy. And uh, that's why the economic, uh, the economic situation uh, in the Philippines and uh, Oh, the world, for the rest of the world, is an important part of the discussion when it comes even to security and defense. Uh, we have come now to uh, recognize the concept of economic security, wherein the, econ the stronger an economy is, the more secure it is and the more partnerships we can maintain uh, to maintain the peace in our region. Uh, allow me to just uh, go through some of the statistics that uh, are relevant to the Philippines in the past few, well, close to a year now since I took office. Uh, the Philippines has been on a path to recovery from COVID-19. The Philippine economy grew by 7.6% for last year, 2022. The main contributors are uh, wholesale and retail trade, manufacturing construction, and construction. Uh, from January to December of 2022, uh, agriculture, forestry, and fisheries and services that uh, related services have all expanded by half a percent, 6.7 percent, and 9.2 percent, respectively. And this has uh, been this is the effect of our very aggressive efforts, really, uh, to promote. Uh, the Philippines as an investment, uh, as an investment destination. It, uh, we have, for our part in the Philippines, tried to create a, an atmosphere that is, uh, that is attractive to potential investors, and we continue that process. That process does not stop. Uh, we, do not say, we will never at any point say we've got it perfected. Uh, we will continue to listen to you and uh, to all our other partners uh, as to what else we can do uh, to help, uh, to help uh, transform our economy and in that way to be able to play a viable part in the security and defense issues that are the challenges of the day and of the region. Uh, 2022 was a banner year also for Philippine exports to the United States. The value of Philippine merchandise exports to the U.S. was the highest on record. Last year, total Philippine exports to the U.S. was $12.3 billion, making the U.S. our top export market. In the same year, our imports from the United States were $8.91 U.S. billion, giving us 
a $3.39 billion trade, uh, $3.39 billion trade surplus. Taking into consideration that the U.S. Uh, GSP system, the program, has yet to be reauthorized by the U.S. Congress, this year-to-year -year increase in our export to the U.S. is quite remarkable. The U.S. GSP covers over 2,000 Philippine products with a 74% utilization rate. This led to a notable increase in travel, goods, exports after the inclusion in 2017. Well, we, with that, uh, as in, uh, in, our, in our back pocket, we are now very, continue to be optimistic about the growth of Philippine exports to the U.S. Based on data uh, from 2019 to 2022, there is good reason to believe that our top electronics and electrical components exports to the U.S. will remain strong as they did throughout the pandemic. These exported products are mostly semiconductors and other electrical and electronic assemblies, including automotive components. Therefore, we are keen to continue to provide support for this sector. Also, to foster competitiveness of the semiconductor and electronic sector, we are advancing the digital transformation of Philippine-based economies, uh, Philippine-based companies. And uh, we uh, have also, uh, in our assessment, of uh, the digitalization of, uh, in the Philippines uh, have found that actually private corporations, commercial, commercially run operations, have been very assiduous in uh, their digitalization. And uh, this is a pro pro probably not surprising considering that that is necessary for a commercial enterprise to continue to do business around the world. Unfortunately, government has fallen behind uh, our partners in the private sector. And that's why we have, uh, uh, we are still now uh, playing catch up uh, from uh, the national government and in the local governments as well. So we support the smart industry readiness of seven of the biggest semiconductor and electronics manufacturing services companies in the country. It helps our digital transformation roadmap. Also, the semi semiconductor industry can gain more from increasing skills in research and development. Because outsourced semiconductor assembly and test is vulnerable to disruptive technologies, we need to undertake research and development that will help us improve business for OSAP firms in the country. Uh, the, this in the context of what we are watching in terms of the semiconductor industry around the world where we are in the middle of a chip war. And that is something that we are hoping uh, to mitigate uh, and to continue to protect. And we're not talking about protectionism, but to continue to protect our uh, semiconductor industry. There is also the trend towards electric vehicles. Philippine exports that are geared towards electrical vehicles used such as wire harnesses, rubber tires, automotive electronics, they all have good potential. We are uh, optimistic about the increase in exports of our solar and photovoltaic related products from the Philippines, as many countries have strived to comply with decarbonization targets. As we foster the Philippines' trade with the U.S., we also strengthen our country's cooperation in terms of defense. On April 11th of this year, in the, United, the, the Philippines and the United States held a two plus two ministerial meeting in Washington, D.C. The secretaries of defense and foreign affairs of both our countries discussed ways to further strengthen our cooperation given the geopolitical situation in the South China Sea. We have reaffirmed our commitments under the 1951 Mutual Defense Treaty. We are actually in the midst of finalizing the uh, basic uh, uh, guidelines for uh, the definition of the Mutual Defense Treaty. This is because we believe that with the changing world that we live in, that we must also, we must also evolve that relationship. And the question of clarity is something that is very, very important to me because what we worry about are misjudgments, mistakes, miscalculations. I do not think in our region that uh, no player in the region is, has any 
intention of going to war. However, uh, the, uh, uh, these miscalculations, misjudgments, mistakes that I speak of could, in fact, trigger uh, a situation where it, that brings us closer to out-and-out uh, -out conflict. Uh, the Philippines has also, in that, in that uh, relevant to this, the Philippines has also allowed the use of four additional locations to enable both countries to respond to challenges, including natural disasters in the Philippines and across the Indo-Pacific region. The alliance between the Philippines and the U.S. is strong. It is founded on shared principles of upholding the rule of law, the freedom of navigation, and the respect for territorial sovereignty. With the strength of our political and defense alliance, we desire a stronger economic integration with the U.S. The COVID-19 pandemic has raised our understanding of the need to address the vulnerabilities of supply chains across industries. Governments and private companies both seek to strengthen supply chains. This has been among the central topics in the Indo-Pacific Indo economic framework. And the Philippines is one, of, one with the other uh, signatories of the IPEF in pursuing the supply chain resilience, especially in semiconductors, solar panels, electrical vehicles, electric batteries, critical minerals, and pharmaceuticals, amongst other important sectors. The Philippines is also a very important partner to U.S. companies in various industries. We have a young, dynamic, efficient workforce. We have attractive incentives, um, such as those granted under the CREATE law, which are concrete policies that uphold international labor and environmental standards, and a constant and unerring, unerring adherence to the protection of intellectual property rights and a regulatory framework for the export of dual use and sensitive products. U.S. businesses can further rely on our long history of hosting companies producing semiconductors, solar panel components, and aerospace parts. These U.S. companies manufacture and export their products from the Philippines. We are grateful for U.S.-owned companies such as Texas Instruments, ON Semi, Analog Devices, SunPower, Maxion Solar Technologies, Moog Controls Corporation, and Raytheon Technologies. These high technology companies continue to grow and expand their investment in our country. Our economic relations have also grown and become stronger. It has been supported by growth in other industries where we work together, for instance, in ITBPM. The Philippines is a top destination for various ITBPM services, including contact center and business processes, healthcare, and animation and game development. ITBPM remains among the top industries for U.S. investments in the Philippines. In, as of June 2022, of the 2,446 ITBPM projects in the country, over 10% or 255 are U.S. funded. 30% of the 1,000 plus companies in the, in the industry being known uh, some being known American firms such as Alorica, Elevance, Optum, Qualphone, Sutherland Global Services, Sykes, and Teletech, amongst others. Almost half of the 90 plus global in house centers, including corporate giants, Amazon, American Express, and JP Morgan, have now of offices located in the Philippines. Opportunities abound as the industry expands in every direction global shared services, IT, and software services towards cloud computing, cybersecurity, and health services, amongst others. The Philippines and the United States can both gain from stronger economic integration, and ahead of us, the path is rife with potential. We hope to get the U.S. GSP program reauthorized. It has been more than two years since the GSP program ended, and we would like very much for the authorization uh, to come about as this boosts trade and to make U.S. products more that are made in the Philippines more competitive in the global market. So once again, we invite U.S. companies to invest in the processing and value adding of minerals in the Philippines. 
as critical inputs to the U.S. electrical vehicle and electric battery industry. We are blessed with, in the Philippines with a, a great deal of potential uh, natural resources that we can find. We are, we have been, but we have not taken full advantage of that yet. When uh, right now, much of the value added to our raw products are not done, are not, it does not happen in the Philippines, but happens outside, and we subsequently import those finished products. We would like to change that very much, and with the help, again, of our partners in the private sector, uh, we hope to achieve that, and so that the so we add value to Philippine products uh, before they leave the Philippines to the benefit of our economy, to the benefit of our workforce, to the benefit of all ordinary Filipinos. So we invite once again uh, the U.S. companies to invest in processing and value adding of minerals in the Philippines. Our country is abundant with these green metals, so-called green metals, such as nickel, copper, cobalt, bauxite, which are used in the manufacture of batteries. Therefore, the Philippines can play a vital role as a partner for critical minerals, not only as an exporter of raw ore, but more importantly, and this is the aspiration, is a, as a processor and producer of semi-finished and finished products. We are presently one of the biggest exporters of nickel ore. I think we are only second to uh, uh, Indonesia in terms of the volumes of nickel that are being extracted from the ground. Uh, perhaps future discussions on a critical minerals agreement with the U.S. should be a good platform to encourage more interest in this sector. Amongst U.S. import exporters, there is also strong demand in agriculture and food products for tariff reduction. These companies are supportive of a free trade agreement between our two countries. The Philippines is one of the biggest importers of such products from the U.S., including soybean, meal, corn, pork, chicken, and potatoes. So there are many opportunities that we can see before us and uh, for our country's greater economic integration are ahead of us. And we seek the support of the private sector, your support, to bring more attention to these opportunities. And it, is, uh, it has been the mission of uh, the economic managers of the country and uh, the structuring or restructuring of our economy and uh, of our legislation and the bureaucracy uh, so that uh, uh, we will continue what we have begun. I agree that there are, there is, that we, are doing very, we are doing well, and, but certainly the potential out there is even greater. And I think now is a very opportune time to take advantage of uh, those opportunities. And uh, I hope that uh, in the future, these discussions that we will begin here will come to fruition. And uh, as I have always done, uh, I invite you all to come. And those of you who are, well, we have here many of all the, the uh, I don't mean old, but <laughs> the ex highly experienced Philippine hands. Uh, amongst us, and uh, uh, and they can certainly, they have already uh, been leading the way for bringing importers and making known uh, the Philippines to uh, U.S. businesses, U.S. Uh, exporters and importers, U.S. Uh, uh, companies in the different sectors. Uh, they have made known and made it clear, made, seen that the, the Philippines should be included in uh, when we are looking, when the U.S. companies are looking for a good place to invest. So uh, we hope that you will, we will join us in the Philippines and, uh, and make the slogan that we have come to use uh, true. And that slogan is, make it happen in the Philippines. Thank you and good afternoon. <laughs>